Hello and welcome to our show. We're so glad you joined us today. I'm Darlene Pigford I'm with Greg. Angie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Greg Bauer with uh, Mr. Excitement here, Wicket, our <laughs> resident uh, dog. And I want to tell our viewers about a couple of shows coming up that I think you'll really be interested. One uh, on quilts for horse lovers. Ah. And I think well, viewers will enjoy that. Similar kind of thing to what we did this time, but emphasizing horses. And then also, uh, we're going to do a story about Splash, a wonder dog who is a therapy dog, but also has uh, been incredibly ill with cancer. He's beaten that and seems to be doing just well. So uh, our folks will really want to see that one. But that's what's coming up. What's on tap for today, Darlene? Well, we have a very good show for you, Greg. Hope everybody will get paper and pencil because we've got some excellent information about that old problem of flea and tick control. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we need all the help we can get for that one. And we're going to try to come from an economical point of view and try to keep our costs down but yet be effective. So mm -hmm. why don't you introduce our guest, Greg? I'll be happy to. i uh, have with us today Michelle Fowler who is a certified vet tech and also a groomer. And uh, she has a lot of experience in working with uh, controlling fleas and ticks. So, <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. I imagine as a groomer, you do have lots of fleas <laughs> come your way, yeah, right? quite a bit. But more, more people call asking about you know, how to take care of it at home. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us, why is it such a problem? The pets themselves, if they get fleas bad, not only do they, you know, scratch and irritate and get topical skin problems from it, if they're on very long, it can cause sicknesses, immune, you know, they can become very um, immune, very, uh, you know, it gets, it, because it gets in the blood and so they become uh, pretty sick from it actually. And then it mm -hmm. also causes the parasites, tapeworms, mm -hmm. which, you know, then all that cycle. So if you catch it earlier, then you don't have all the problems like that to deal with. Mm -hmm. It also can cause a lot of allergies, potentially, right? right? skin problems and the scratching and the bleeding in the skin. Mm. And, right. Anyway, so in other words, we know it's something we need to do something about. Right. Okay. All right. And tell us about this life cycle of the fleas, which really is one of the reasons it's such a, uh, a hard problem. Right. You know, people have that misconception. Everybody says if a flea bites you or it only lives 24 hours, Actually, a flea can live from from 15 days to two years, depending, mm -hmm. because they've got they've got their egg cycle, the larvae, a pupa, and then the adult flea. Okay. But each cycle, it depends on the climate where they're at. If it's in a warm, moist climate, their cycle is going to be shorter because the heat, and the moisture, right. or the vibration from the skin being on the dog actually um, you know develops it quicker. But if you know, like when they scratch a flea egg, people don't realize. They may scratch an egg fall off out on the ground in the cool weather. It'll stay dormant until spring Ooh. and then hatch when mm -hmm. the weather's warm, moist again. So in other words, we will not be concerned about just killing the flea. We got to kill the eggs right. and the larva and the, right. the whole thing. Uh, you were telling me some statistics about uh, what one flea might produce. According to most records, one adult flea, female, can lay at least 50 eggs a day Ooh. and out a short lifespan of just two months as an adult they can lay anywhere from 1500 to 2600 eggs mm. so and that's and people don't realize they multiply that quickly so if you see one flea and you don't just do something right away within two or three days you're going to have a major infestation of them and you, and you can kill the fleas and think, well, everything's okay. Right. But then 30 days later, or, or X amount of days later, those eggs have become fleas. Right. So you got the same problem. Right. It's, it is, it's an ongoing process, not just to treat it once and it be finished. Okay. So it's something we have to pay attention to. Oh, okay. Correct. How about ticks? Are they, do they multiply as easily? No. No. The ticks, once you've gotten it off, and killed it, you just have to make sure you know that you've removed the head of the tick as well, just like with a person, because they can bed up underneath of the skin um, and then regrow the body part. They'll still cause the damage if you don't remove the head, but they don't multiply like that. You know, they won't drop eggs through your house or anything along that lines like the flea will. Okay. Well, now, they're easy to recognize. A tick is usually a, um, a, a, a you small, know, dark, small, round. dark, long thing usually right yes but now long. a lot of times if, if your dog goes out and gets in a nest of them yeah. it looks like just small little 
sand size flex on their skin depending on oh, really? how big the tick is and until the tick attaches and actually draws some blood it won't get bigger and they will burrow up oh. underneath of the skin and you know a lot of times you don't even realize it's a tick because it just looks like a dark dark little spot on the skin i didn't realize that yeah well, one of the common misconceptions i think that people have is that uh, fleas and ticks don't breed in the winter and nothing could be further from the truth, could it? Exactly. Just like I said, you know, the ticks you don't see as much because usually, you know, they don't reproduce like a flea does. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they fall from the trees and stuff onto the pets. You'll still find some occasionally, but the fleas, they'll go year round. If they're in your home, you keep your home warm, they're still going to multiply being in there because it's, it's, especially if, you know, you've got a, a humidifier or something like that in your home, uh -huh. uh, the moist heat, it's just like being in the spring or the fall. Uh -huh. So okay. and a lot of people do stop using their flea products in, um, you know, they think winter's here, will stop, and then they have a problem within a few months. Mm -hmm. Well, I know in our part of the country, um, the, uh, we always hope that we have some real good cold weather. <laughs> uh, Sometimes. What, I think it, it's like maybe a week to 10 days or two weeks, I guess, maybe of down very, very cold, zero to five above, and it will kill a lot of the the uh, population. However, we don't have that advantage here in this part of the country like say they do in Minnesota exactly. or uh, up north. So, uh, that's but they also don't have the moist humidity levels yeah. that we do which is why it's so more common here than it is uh -huh. you know, some of the other states. Okay. Ooh. So it's a problem we really need to tackle, right yes, Greg? Yes, absolutely. And we're going to talk about tackling that problem. That's right. But we want to first of all stop and let our viewers see a happy tale. And this is a very special happy tale because it's about Darlene's and my one Grand of my dog. grand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a neat little story about Max and I think you'll enjoy it. So give a listen. Hi, my name is Max and I'm a dachshund who is just over a year old. I'm an apricot and white and they tell me that's an unusual coloring for a dachshund. I'm now full grown and weigh about nine pounds. On Christmas 2009, I was wrapped in a box under the Christmas tree, just waiting to see what would happen. When Nicholas unwrapped the box, I jumped out and began to lick his face. We were both very happy to see each other and I quickly became a member of the Buffo family. I loved to run and play with the family and Miley, the other family dog. I also loved to chew on bones. As you know, dachshunds have pretty short legs, but I can jump well if there's something I want, like food. I'm such a lucky guy. Thanks to Nicholas, Alex, Novice, and David, I have a happy forever home. Welcome back. <laughs> we, we hope you enjoyed that little tale about Max. He's a, he's a real interesting little dog, and uh, uh, we thank the Buffos for sharing that uh, story with us. Uh, we talked about the problem of fleas and ticks. Now, what can we do about it, Michelle? <laughs> yes, let's get to the... <laughs> How can we kill the eggs and the larvae, et cetera, et cetera, so we don't have the, the problems of fleas? You know, they have a lot of the, you know, your vets all, most of your chemicals that you buy over the counter right. are, mm -hmm. the FDA is taking most of the harsh chemicals out. All it basically does for your over-the-counter flea dips is make your pets smell bad and it doesn't really affect the fleas. You know, you go through your vet and get either whatever type of flea product you want. They have the flea pills, the topicals, right. all of that. But, if you don't do that, you get fleas ahead of time. You know, it's yeah, costly. It, it is extremely costly. Right. It's easier to spend a little each month for preventive than it is to try to correct it once the problem's there. But if but, we do get the flea stuff, say like from our vet, I guess we should ask: Does this kill the eggs? Yes, and still, and people don't realize even using that, you may have a, a flea that's just tough enough to still get on there and survive. And if even so, if they bring them in your home, your dog may be treated, but that doesn't mean they haven't lost an egg or two in the house, and then you get infestation in your house. Yeah, but I didn't realize some of the commercial things kill the fleas, but not the eggs. Right. So you need to ask your vet. Well, what can you do to help us out on the the low cost but effective things that you we know, might be able to do? If you see a flea, most people tend to run and go buy a bottle of flea shampoo, which that's okay. It's kind of expensive a lot of times. But it also, it will, it's very harsh on their skin. It'll dry out their skin, cause them to continue scratching even though the fleas are gone. Most people have dandruff shampoo and um, most all people have dishwashing liquid at home. Either one of those are just as effective oh. to kill the fleas on the pets. They're easier on the animal's skin. Um, 
it's, you know, a dishwashing liquid is what most of the vets will recommend. But if you're having to bathe quite a bit or it's a young puppy or kitten, a, um, a dandruff shampoo, any type dandruff shampoo, or a, a milder dishwashing liquid works real well. And when you do, you want to start with a ring around the neck because if you start on the back of the body, the fleas all run towards the head. They'll climb in the right. eyes, ears, nose, and then as soon as you pull them out of the bathtub, so, repeat, come, so start ar around. Make the, a ring completely around their neck, and then wash. So they'll them, run to other parts. Right, of so the they body. can't come up to the head, and then do the around the neck, and you have to do the face. You know, it's yeah. hard because the eyes, but you have to do around the face because most flea areas are at, right at the base of the tail, and right at the front of the head because you know they say that's where they go for their water or anything of that sort. And if it if the the water runs a dark color. What's that a sign of? That's from where your pet has been bitten enough times. When when a flea bites, you'll see a lot of times people think it's just dirt on their skin. It's like crumbly black pepper uh -huh. or a little bigger. That's actually blood balls. And when you run mm. the water over it, if the water runs, it's not dirt on your pet. It's actually where it's been bitten, and it's actually little bits of blood that's oh. running out. Mm. And that's you know that's. And I don't think people realize that. Yeah. I think also a lot of people think, well, my pet never goes outdoors, therefore I won't have a flea problem. But That's it, not true, is it? No, because it, if you have a squirrel, rabbit, mouse, a neighbor's dog, anything that walks through your yard, knocks an egg off, it just may be that you can walk past, that egg get on you, come in, you know, and then you carry them into your home that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we and a lot of other people, we have house shoes. Yeah. So when we come in from the outside, we change our shoe, and, you know, so right. we're not tracking stuff from the outside on, onto the inside, you know. Now, if you visit us, we don't make you change <laughs> shoes or anything, but like, I know a, a family that does that, but, well. you know, it does, it, it, it's good on your carpet, and it, it's good not to bring the tar and all the stuff from right. outside. So, but what people, everyone has probably had a mouse at some point in time that has gotten in their home. People don't realize just a little field mouse can carry a flea in. Just to, you know, they get fleas and stuff just as well as your dogs and cats. They can come in, drop an egg somewhere, and it, you right. can get it that way. Okay. All right. You were telling me about salt. <laughs> I what? don't know why it works, but. If you do think you have them in your home, you can sprinkle just whatever table salt on your carpet, just like you would a carpet powder. If you sprinkle flea powders on your carpet, if your pet's down there on it. It's gonna irritate his skin. If you have a baby down there, it's gonna irritate right. and bother him. The mm -hmm. table salt won't. You sprinkle it on your carpet, let it set, just like you would a table salt. Vacuum it up, 30, or like you would a carpet powder. Um, vacuum it up in 30 minutes or so, and there's something in it that actually helps to kill them or it runs them out. I'm not. It works very well. Okay. And if you're concerned, you might say, "Well, I don't know if I want to put salt, uh, salt on my really good carpet. Right. Try it on an area. Right. Uh, I've been using that on my carpets. I read somewhere it would brighten. So I have. I put this on my carpets for a long time. I've not heard of anyone, you know, having any problems with it hurting their carpets mm -hmm. or their pets. Right. And if you're doing that, you might as well freshen it with. <laughs> Baking soda. With baking, yeah. I don't think that'll do anything for the fleas. I don't know. But it, it will certainly make it smell really good. Right. And, and a lot of people think, well, the fleas aren't getting on me, so I don't have any in my house. They're just on the pet. S fleas do not bother some people. Some people, they do. Ugh. If you want to know if you have any in your home, you know, you can go buy the, the flea traps, $15, $20, but you can really easily make one at home and set it in each room in your house, then you know for sure if you have fleas in there. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take a small cake pan, uh, baking dish, whatever, something of that sort, fill it with water, two or three drops of dishwashing liquid, and then shine a night light down on it or a table lamp where it's shining in the water. Night light's great because if they bump the night light, it's, it falls in the water, it's unplugged. You know, that's safe. Mm -hmm. It's not enough dishwashing liquid to hurt an animal, a child, anything if they get in the water. Uh -huh. But the fleas are attracted to the light, so if you have any in that room, you'll find some in the water. And the two or three drops of dishwashing liquid will kill them when they jump in the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So in other words, all I do is I take a dish, uh, put maybe a couple of inches of water, a mm -hmm. couple of drops of dishwashing, put it under a night light at night, and if I've got fleas, I'm probably going to find little black stuff in you will, it. You'll find mm -hmm. fleas floating in the water. Wow. Correct. And with the dishwashing liquid, your animals will not go drink the water. 
And, and even even if they did two or three, you've got you know say mm -hmm. a brownie plate with two or three drops of dishwashing liquid. It's not enough that would do any damage if it got spilled, drank, kids okay. playing in it. It's not mm -hmm. enough that would hurt anything. All right, but this is at night because in the dark they, yeah. they are attracted to the light. Correct. Okay. All right. So this you put by a uh, near a night light. Right. You can say. I mean. It, you can do a lamp and all, but then you have to worry about a dog the bumping plug. it, and you know, mm -hmm. the night lights work wonderful. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're just beginning to scratch the surface oh, with I no know. pun intended there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, but we want to take a short break now and let our viewers have another treat and listen to another happy tale about a little Pomeranian dog oh. named Lily. So give a listen. I think you'll enjoy this story. Hi, my name is Lily and I'm a blonde female Pomeranian. I'm about two and a half years old. I had had a pretty rough beginning to my life. It was pretty miserable. Someone took me to Second Chance and Happy Tales Rescue in Clarksville, Tennessee. The people called Miss Hetty, Byron Paducah, about me and she came to get me on Christmas Eve 2009. One cold day I ran away and Miss Hetty was petrified. But I knew that she would give me a good home so I came back quickly. She took me to a trainer who taught me how to walk on a leash, and Miss Hetty and I began to take lots of walks and go for rides in the car. One day, Miss Hetty and I went to a nursing home to see one of her friends. Everyone there was so friendly. One lady, who the nurses said never reacted to her surroundings, wanted to pet me. Some of my best times are sitting with Miss Hetty's family. Thank you, Miss Hetty, for giving me a happy forever home. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that wonderful tale about uh, Lily, and we thank Miss Hetty uh, Byer for uh, sharing that tale with us. And that this does. afternoon, we have Michelle ba um, Fowler with us, who is uh, a certified vet tech and groomer, and she is talking to us about how can we control fleas and ticks. And we've got some wonderful ideas oh, so yes far. Oh, yes, we have. Um, let's let's move to another part of the area. What is the importance of brushing your pets, Michelle, for controlling fleas and ticks? Using the flea combs, it will, when you get in to, under the skin, the comb, any type of flea comb, like she has uh, the little plastic ones, any of it, mm -hmm. as you scrape it out, not only will you scrape out the live fleas, if there are any eggs on there, some of the eggs, if your pet's hair is bushy and all, some of the skin will, some of the eggs will stay in the skin, some of it will fall off, but when you use a real small comb like the flea combs and you get under there and it brush, you'll scrape out not only the, the live fleas, the eggs, any of the uh, Little flea dirt. dirt that's on there, and that helps to eliminate free infestation. But when you do and you tend to brush, sometimes you do find the live fleas or the eggs, you'll want to keep something like alcohol um, to dip it in after you've brushed each stroke to kill off anything that may be on there, or if you're worried about alcohol with your skin, um, you can use the water with a few drops of dishwashing liquid in it again, something like that to um, kill right. anything that may right. be on the comb. So in mm -hmm. other words, for a cat or a dog, I take this comb and I brush around, comb around their neck and I look to see if it catches anything. And if I see little black stuff, then that's flea dirt. And if it moves, that's a live flea, <laughs> right? Correct. And so you would dip it into a cup of alcohol or water to kill the fleas. Because exactly. I've used water before and those fleas will hop out of that water. Yeah, exactly. So right. uh, I had one poor little uh, uh, cat that I fostered and it was indoors, outdoors, and we put flea products on it. But I had to use that flea comb for two weeks. I got 25 fleas a day off of that cat. Right. But And I had to had to use the flea comb before I could ever get that under control. So that's why my cats are indoors. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't well, do that. that. That cat was infested with well, them. I think it's also important to remember that when you do that uh, brushing with the flea combs and things like that, it may look to you visually that there, you didn't get anything off, but you did. And so you need to thoroughly clean that comb whether you saw anything or not because oh, chances yes. are it's it's going to be there. And yeah, because uh, the the eggs, the larvae, the pupa stage, all of those are so small that you would mm -hmm. you wouldn't even think it was a, a flea or anything having to do with the flea. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, if you've got like you said more than one cat, if you use the flea comb and you use it on the second cat, wash the comb before yes. right bef uh, yeah. before you go before you go to or to use the, the alcohol because that sterilizes it as well, keeps you from spreading any 
I, I think it's also important that when you have wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> when you have longer haired animals such as Angie here, um, when you do some grooming with uh, what sometimes is called a furminator or something like that and get some of that matted hair <laughs> out, it'll be much easier to get those fleas and right. uh, ticks off. And so. when you're setting there brushing them, you don't want to do it on the middle of your living room carpet or something <laughs> because fleas can jump. And you know, when you're mm -hmm. brushing them off, they're going to jump immediately to something. You'll want to do it maybe like mm -hmm. in a laundry room or something that has linoleum floor and immediately wop, uh, mop with some water with a little bleach or something, sweep up everything immediately after mm -hmm. you're finished. Yeah. Uh, washing pet beds, tell us about that. It's, it's, you really need to wash them probably at least weekly or something just in case your pet does carry in some uh, flea dirt or some flea eggs or something. If you, you know, most of them are white, you can have a little uh, little ble bleach in the water or washed in the warm hot water like that. It usually will take care of it. Mm -hmm. I never buy a dog or cat bed that can't be washed, can't be thrown in the washing machine. Exactly. Uh, even the heated beds that I have for my older cats they have a zipper cushion. You take the, the zippered part off and, and you wash it in the washing machine. And uh, I really would advise, so that's one way. Any bedding or any place that your animals, you know, stay, you know, if there's a particular blanket or something, you keep it wa well washed, right? Correct, and if you do have one that can't be washed, um, the studies say if you take it and put it in a uh, trash bag or something, seal it up and leave it in there for a week to 10 days, just being completely sealed off, closed up in there, you should be able to get rid of it that way. What if you put mothballs in that? I, I don't know about the well, mothballs. Well, I've heard that, uh, well, I have read like if you're vacuuming and you've got the vacuum bag, right. if you put mothballs in your vacuum cleaner bag, that that will kill the fleas. Now, my vacuum cleaner, I empty it out right. d uh, daily, but still, you know, I guess something is stupid, but you don't want your pets to get into mothballs. No, but you could probably take some table salt instead well, that's and sprinkle a good idea. it down in your vacuum cleaner bag or in the, a bag with the toy. And you do the toys as well as the beds, not just the oh. beds, any stuffed animal You're stuffed that toys, <laughs> anything like that. They, you, need, you know, you can get fleas on the little fleece toys. Well, no, we've spent an awful lot of time talking about what to do about fleas. What about ticks? <laughs> I, that's why people aren't as concerned about them. They do carry the, a lot of the tick diseases. You get the mm -hmm. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, the Lyme disease. Uh, the ticks, when you find one, you'll use the same process as with the person, alcohol, to make it release the head, tweezer or something like that, because you want to make sure you get all of it. Mm -hmm. And usually if your dog has gotten out into a nest of it, as I said, you can get tiny, small ticks, and it's really hard to find a lot. But keep get you know, it just like a bottle of alcohol, and as you pull it off, if you'll drop them in the alcohol, it'll kill them immediately. And then you can use like alcohol and a cotton ball to help make them release from your pet. Mm -hmm. okay. I've I've heard also that at least with humans, I don't know if you want to do this with pets, that if you strike a match and touch the hot tip to the flea, it will usually let go. Right. I don't, yeah. If your dog's docile enough to sit there and let you do it, but no. <laughs> that's <Exactly. true. laughs> so When you're trying to light the match, he'll be gone, I promise. <laughs> well, that, that's very true. Well, I, I just throw that out. As <laughs> well, Michelle, you've been very kind, and you have volunteered that if our viewers have any, you know, uh, questions, and there are other you know, if you've got lots of pets, there are way, other additional ways and that you would be glad to answer their questions. How can they contact you? For example, what's your phone number? You can, I can be reached at 270-534-8067. And uh, your email? You can reach me at groomingdells at pp at gmail. It's g-r-o-o-m-i-n-g-d-a-l-e-s-a-t-p-p at gmail.com. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's very kind of you to you know, if, if people have uh, a follow through question. So, uh, and since it's so important, would you give us a quick summary now of the things I need to do to control fleas because they, you know, I got to kill the eggs mm -hmm. down, you know, through the, give first, us a quick review. First, keep your pet on some type of flea preventive from your vet year round, not just through the warm months. Okay. If you do find fleas, bathe them in a dishwashing liquid or a dandruff shampoo up to, to periodically check in your house if you're worried about having them. Make your home flea trap with the baking dish, water, and a little soap and a night light. Okay. And that 
kind of, it, well, and continuous brushing with the flea comb will help get rid of any eggs or anything as well. And the, the table salt on the carpets, and it doesn't hurt to do that maybe just once a week or something just as a preventive. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah well, I know since I have uh, uh, multiple pets, I've probably <laughs> done more vacuuming in the last uh, four or five exactly. years of my life than lot, I ever yeah. did, did previously. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of times people think, well, I'll set off a bomb, but certain stages of the life cycle, it won't kill them. And plus, if that mist doesn't hit the flea directly, it usually won't kill them. If, you know, if that flea is jumping midair, it can get underneath the furniture or something, you won't hit it. If you bomb, you have to do it three or four weeks consecutive. You have to throw bombs underneath your house in the crawl space. And chances are you'll still find one here or there and then multiply to the point back within a month or so back where you were. Uh, we did find something. We went to one of the local stores around here and put something around our house that was to kill ants. And I read the bag and it also killed fleas. Yep. But it was an outside product. And, uh, and you only had to do that uh, once. And, and that really did help. Right. And, and a lot of times people don't realize a lot of your um, oils, like um, you can look and go online and look it up. A lot of times just your baking oil type stuff with the different flavored oils will help prevent fleas and different kinds of bugs in your home. Put on a cotton ball and put different places. I can't believe it. Time is passing. <laughs> Michelle, what one thing would you like our viewers to remember about flea and tick control? It's not just a single little flea that's scratching. It is actually something that's harmful to their health in a lot of ways. Not just the topical itch. It can cause them to become sick, uh, anemic tapeworms, everything. And if you get one, then you guarantee you'll have yeah. plenty more within a day <laughs> or so. And, and one of the things that you, if you take some preventative measures early, you'll keep yourself from getting into a really right. desperate situation. But to these get are ongoing. Them. Right, yep. no ongoing. one thing alone works. Gotcha. You have to have, you know, the, the best thing is your flea pre preventative on your pet. Okay. But treat your yard, your house periodically just as a backup. Fantastic advice. Oh, uh, yeah, we sure have learned an awful lot today, and yes. we hope that our viewers have too. And you hear we're that, Andy? Unfortunately, <laughs> coming to, to the end, and we're going to have to, to uh, uh, sign off for another time. But, Michelle, we want to thank you so very much for spending time with yes. us this afternoon and some really wonderful tips that I know are going to help our viewers. And the only thing that we can say is that we hope that they don't <laughs> uh, get themselves into a really bad situation. But if you work at it from the beginning, from the start, it can, the, it can be controlled. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, well, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, well good information. Uh, Angie, oh. do you hear all that now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, unfortunately, it's time for us to close. Yes. And so. I'm Darlene with Angie. And I'm Greg with Wicket, wanting to remind our viewers <laughs> what we say every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Bye. Take care of them.